Good morning, everybody. I'm heading out to a call here for another one of my three or four customers. Actually, I recounted. I don't think it's three. I think it's four. So I'm going to go attend to 25% of my customer base this morning. Uh, the complaint is low voltage short, which is awful specific for a customer to complain about. I guess they have some knowledge. And this unit, which is um, Carrier Bryant, maybe must have a resettable fuse because they were referring to it. And I asked if they meant the ones in the breaker box just to make sure there wasn't any confusion, but they said 24 volt fuse. So this morning, I guess we'll be looking for a short. Let's check our thermostat voltage. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Yep, that's good. It's okay to be a little bit high. That's fine. It drops under load. So we have a resettable fuse down there. We got relays on the board here, defrost board. We have relays in the blower control and we have a coil on the contactor. And then there's probably some sort of coil in there too. Probably those DC coils. Why? We'll open these up, see if anything looks burnt. Probably shut the power off and just test it that way. We look inside the heat kit. It's got a little door right there. See those little relays down there? They have DC coils. I guess some little rectifier or something. Smarter people could explain that, but they can short out too. So I'm gonna check some of these common spots like the contactor coil, and then I'll show you if I find something. We got ourselves a puppy friend over here. Oh, wait, come man. Hey, dude. Got a little bit of obesity. Got the diabetes. I broke out my fluke alligator or plunger leads or whatever they're called. And the contactor is fine. 10.9's not shorted. It's relatively new as well. I have my leads. I had to take the other leads off because they wouldn't fit. 97.6 ohms on this DC coil, which I'm not positive what it's supposed to be, but we'll compare with the other one since they're supposedly the same, unless, I, unless I'm mistaken. We'll see if they're both very similar in ohm rating. I have my leads on the other coil, and it is 96, which is going to lead me to believe that is a normal measurement because they're both really close. So we're going to move on maybe over to the blower control here, which is also... Not old. And then we can actually take the defrost board off, see if the back is burnt or something like that. I am on the G and C terminal of the blower relay. It says 0.976 kilo ohms. That's 976 ohms. Seems a little high. I figured I'd just be a coil voltage in there, but maybe I'm mistaken. This could be the culprit though, but that's not a short. That's basically an open line almost. So. Let me take a peek at the defrost board and then we'll maybe run this and check out and see if this fan control sets off the fuse. Well, our, our control board looks flawless on the back. Looks really good. So probably not an issue. Interesting. Okay. Just for toots and giggles, I hooked up the common and the orange from the reversing valve just to see because there's a little coil on top of it. 16.4 is normal for that coil, so that's good. So we're really looking at the blower control as our number one potential culprit so far. So I came out to the thermostat wire field connections here, and I have the commons, and I have the 24 volt hot, which there should be uh, a ton of resistance in between at any given time. And it shows no resistance, so that is a short. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull them apart here and see if they're shorted in the thermostat wire that should run underneath the house. When I tested the common against the green, the yellow, and the orange, we got the proper amount of ohms based on what coils they were connected to. And uh, there was no dead shorts, but on this, R to C, there's a dead short, which is definitely gonna blow your fuse. So let me take these apart to see if the wire's got an issue going under the house to the thermostat. I have red for the thermostat wire to blue for the thermostat wire, and we have plenty of resistance. So it's happening after this connection. Let me do a little bit of poking around and I'll show you guys what I find. So there are a couple common wires that are wire knitted to this blue wire, which is also common. And one of them had over a mega ohm of resistance, so this one's fine, but this one is almost nothing. So we're gonna trace and see where this one goes, see if we can't find where the issue is. I think I need to brush up on my electrical theory. Uh, I have a transformer here. Just going from the 24 volt hot to common. There is no resistance at all. But I would have thought it would have been burn up right off the bat, but I guess I'm mistaken. I guess the fuse protected it from burning up even though it's putting out 28 volts. I'm a little confused. So maybe one of you guys know the answer to that question. Maybe it will put out voltage unless a load's on it or something. Interesting. Or it just pops. I'm not quite sure what happens there. That's interesting right there. So I'm going to take it off, see if I can't see anything. Actually, let me not do that. I'll take a picture of it with all the wires on it just in case. And then uh, I have to go get one 75 VA. Don't have one of those. Let me take it off and take a look at it and see if there's anything special. It doesn't really matter how long I've done HVAC service. I'm always, I still question my diagnosis until I see the unit in action. Even on the simplest diagnosis, I'm still like, what if there's something else I missed? I'm, I'm not to the point I'd say it's paranoid, but I always, I don't know, healthy skepticism, making sure I'm not being confident. That's not true. I'm just... I'm just nervous over it, but I can kind of masquerade it as something more noble. <laughs> uh, so I'm heading to get the transformer, and the reason why I'm talking about that is the fact that the transformer, it's usually, you know, it's like a compressor. They're usually murdered. They're not the reason something happens. They're the effect of a coil going bad. So until I see this thing fired up and working normally, it's gonna be kind of weird for it just to be the transformer out of the blue, shorted out that's kind of weird to me so i'll be looking for a secondary issue and hoping i don't shred another transformer so i'm probably going to buy two just in case i need a couple anyway need an extra one i actually need some 9340 relays too just every now and then when i'm dealing with my four customers as it fluctuates there might be five maybe there's six i don't know there's a few so i want to have some parts on hand just in case there's something i can fix there on the spot So I have the new transformer in here with the United and it tests very similar to the other one. So I need to see if I made a mistake or what in putting in the new transformer. I know having a circuit breaker built into it's gonna be a nice thing to have. Even though we have a circuit breaker down here, I have this Kweets meter, which is HT200B set on max amps. See if we can catch that small of an amperage, we're gonna see. I'm gonna turn the machine on to see if it trips. And if so, we're gonna see what the amperage is because perhaps either the transformer or the circuit breaker is weak as well, causing it to trip. There's a whole bunch going on in here to power up. So we're gonna see. Maybe we can turn on each function at one time, starting with the blower. You can hear the fan running right there. We got 0.15 amps. So that is our fan relay in action. So we can skip to whatever it would be next, which would be the compressor in heating mode. And then we can energize a reversing valve as well, and then the heat strips, even though they're offline right now as far as high voltage. You guys can hear the compressor running now. It's down in there. You can see that the machine is running at 8.3 amps, and our low voltage is now at 0.4 amps. So we have plenty of room to spare low voltage and high voltage wise as far as our overcurrent protection and we're gonna have to try the heat strips next like i said even though they're out of commission it looks uh, like the relays still might be worth trying you 
see there's wire going in there to the relays. I'm not sure both of them wired up. Maybe they both are. And we have one wire to spare here. So we'll give it a shot anyway. That is with the compressor off. Now low voltage side with the heat strips running. So that would not add up to, um, actually we can show if I can get the lead, lead down in there while we're doing this. You can see that the signal for the heat strips is running. We have measured in between these whites and the common on the contactor. So now we have to try the reversing valve because that would come on during defrost. If you can see right there, the reversing valve terminals are a little damaged. Now the machine is in cooling. We have 7.23 amps, running a little lower amperage, lower pressure on the compressor discharge. We have 0.68 because we have the reversing valve, the blower, and the contactor energized. So the only thing we could do now is if there's a test on the defrost board, which there probably is. It looks like there is down there. We can test defrost, but it looks like our transformer might have been the culprit the whole time. It's weakened transformer. Still putting out voltage. It's kind of weird. Makes me paranoid. All right, let me run it for a little bit, and we might test that defrost. We might not, and then we'll go from there. Definitely have to address those wires on the reversing valve. Look at here. Get right up close. That might have been a factor. Look at that. We got quite a few areas here. We're going to have to run some new wire. Wow. So that's what did us in right there. Okie dokie, so as we can see down there, there is the reversing valve, some new connectors on it, new wiring. Unit running and cooling now. Just gotta make sure everything's running properly. So I am all finished heading back to the house. I have a track meet to go to for Mallory and Andrew, my son and daughter, or 50% of my children. I have the same amount of children I do customers for. So I'm gonna head back to the house, take a look at that. It's over at the high school. I think we figure out the issue there. Transformer might have been a secondary issue. There's arguments can be made that the transformer could have been left in there, but I felt like since we already had a new one and we're gonna had issues before as far as shorting out causing the breaker to trip might as well upgrade the transformer so debate can be had on that i'm sure but the wire looked like it was rubbing through on the copper line there i went ahead and secured it even put a little bit of tape around it where it was close to the suction hot gas line to make sure it didn't rub up against there and hopefully it'll be good to go until that old bird breaks again